Hola, hello. In today's lesson, which is going to be lección número 4, we're going to be talking about España, Spain. Now make sure that you copy all the notes in your journal, and I'm also going to provide you with a map about España that you guys need to label accordingly with the presentation and that you will use in order to study for your test número 1. Again, make sure that you copy all your notes in your journal. This is lección número 4. Vamos a empezar. Let's begin. In today's lesson, the students will be able to describe the key parts in Spanish culture, including the geography, the government, the main cities, the Spanish cuisine, literature, and art, and also the religion. Like I said, make sure that you put the title on this section so you know what are we talking about. These are your notes. These are required notes. Make sure that if you have any questions, go back at any time during the video. Let's begin with the ubicación. Ubicación, location. If you see the picture right here that I'm showing you, this is a festival that occurs in España. This is a really popular festival uh, from which Spain is known. It's about a bullfight racing. People from all over the world come to this festival. They dress in white and red, and they run while the bulls are chasing them. Obviously, everything ends in the bull ring and that's where the bullfight starts. Notice how the word ubicación has an acento on the O. Make sure that you include it on your notes that way that you maintain the proper grammar. Officially the Kingdom of Spain or in Spanish Reino de España, Spain is a sovereign state largely located in the Iberian Peninsula in southwestern Europe. Now, why is it called a sovereign state? Because they're ruled by a monarch. Obviously, they also have a prime minister that acts as a president, but the one that makes the final decisions as for the head of state and the head of the military forces is going to be the king. Now, we're going to be discussing the mainland. Spain is located, like we said, on the European continent. On the south and on the east, they have the Mediterranean Sea. On the northern northeast, they have France, Andorra, and the Van Bay of Biscay. On the west and northwest, they have Portugal and the Atlantic Ocean. Something that you need to remember about the Atlantic Ocean is that this is the ocean that you need to cross in order to get from Europe to America. This is the main ocean dividing those two continents. Now here we have the map of España. Here is Spain, obviously with the star. Whenever you see a star on a map, it's because you're referring to a capital city. The capital city is going to be Madrid. We have at the top the Bay of Biscay, the Atlantic Ocean. Again, in the south, we have the Atlantic Ocean again, and also the Mediterranean Sea. One of the countries that borders with Spain is France over here, Portugal, Marruecos, also known as Morocco, and Algeria. Some of the main cities that we're going to be talking about are going to be Barcelona, Valencia, Sevilla, Madrid, and remember the picture that I showed you at the beginning about the bullfight racing? Well, that occurs in Pamplona. That's why they're called Plam Pamplonadas, those festivals. Now the territorio, the territory. With an area of 195,000 square miles, Spain is the fourth largest country in the European continent. By population, with 46 million people, Spain is the sixth largest country in Europe. Spain's capital and largest city is going to be obviously Madrid. Spain is divided in 17 autonomous communities, that means 17 autonomous states. They are in charge of making their own proper rules, but at the end they respond to a common ruler, which in this case is the king. The main river is Tajo, and the main mountain ranges that divide Spain from France are going to be called the Pyrenees or the Pyrenees in Espanol. Now this is the flag of España. If you notice, it's composed of three colors, rojo, amarillo, rojo, red, yellow, and red. Notice how the main motto of this flag is going to be the following. 
like you see right here it says Spanish flag flag en español es bandera bandera de España the motto of that uh, bandera it's these words that you see right here plus ultra which means further beyond why further beyond because a long time ago Spain like Britain was an empire that's why all of those 21 countries that we discussed on the importance of Spanish on that lesson that I show you that's why they all speak Spanish eventually like the first northern colonies in the US fight for their independence against Britain those countries one by one fight for the independence from Spain that's why nowadays each of those countries are independent and they have their own proper governments they don't respond to Spain anymore this is the territorio these are the 17 autonomous communities the main one that you have to worry about is Madrid okay that's the main one that we're gonna discuss, be discussing we have Galicia, Asturias, Castilla y León, Cantabria, Basque Country, La Rioja, Aragón, Navarre, Catalonia, Valencia, Balearic Islands, Murcia, Castilla-La Mancha, Andalucía, Extremadura, Ceuta, Melilla, and Canary Islands. Now these are the cities that are divided in all those autonomous communities this is what it looks like with each city as you can notice Spain is not that big uh, of a country it's actually pretty little the main capital is going to be here Madrid one of the most important cities near the coast is going to be Barcelona and then Cadiz we're going to be talking about those we also have Valencia Valencia and Sevilla now we're going to start talking about the map of España. I'm going to provide with this map to you in the classroom. Make sure that you paste it in your journals because we're going to discuss the countries surrounding España, the main oceans, um, which are here, right? The main cities covering all of this and the main river. So let's start. We're going to be talking about España, which means Spain. Now España is surrounded by Portugal. Francia, which means France, Argelia, Argelia, Marruecos, Morocco. Make sure that you're filling this in your mapa that I'm giving you. Now, the main capital city is going to be Madrid. If you remember what I told you, every time you see a star in a map regarding a country, it's because they're talking about their capital city. In this case, it's Madrid. Now, for Portugal, it's going to be Lisboa or Lisbon. This you also have to fill in. Now we're going to be moving around the oceans and the sea. If you remember the map that I showed you earlier, you can clearly see how España is surrounded by water. This is one of the key features why their cuisine is mainly made out of seafood. We have Ocean Atlantico, the Atlantic Ocean. Remember that is the main ocean that you have to cross in order to get to Europe from America. Mar Mediterráneo, Mediterranean Sea. Mar Cantabrico, Cantabric Sea. How do you write Cantabric? Well, just get rid of the O, okay? That's all you need to do, Cantabric. Rio Tajo, now Rio means a river. Tajo, that's the name of the river, and this line that you see right here represents the main river of España, Rio Tajo. Pirineos, these little triangles that you, hear right, that you see right here represents the mountains. These mountains, the Pyrenees or Pyrenees, that I told you earlier, are the ones that divide Francia from España. Then let's move on to the main cities. We have Bilbao at the north. Bilbao is a city that's going to be near the coast. Barcelona, also a city that's near the coast and known mainly for their church, the Sagrada Familia, the Sacred Family Church. Valencia, now Valencia is known for a festival that takes place in March and the Spain's national dish, that's where it started, in Valencia. Alicante, it's another city. Sevilla, now Sevilla is known for being a cultural center. 
Sevilla also is the birthplace of the main dance of España, and you're going to see it on the next couple of slides. Toledo, and finally Cádiz. Those are the most important cities of España. You have to locate them in the map. They're going to be in your test. Now, gobierno, government. If you remember what I told you earlier, España is a sovereign country. That means that they are ruled by a monarch. Obviously, being a country ruled by monarchs, you're going to find palaces all over España. Now, this palace is the royal palace of España, and it's located in Madrid. Obviously, the king and the queen, they don't live there anymore. They only use it for proper ceremonies. Now, gobierno, government. Spain is a constitutional monarchy government governed under the Constitution of 1978. Prior to 1978, Spain was under a dictatorship. It was a bad moment for España, but after the dictator was overthrown, the monarchy came into place and everything settled down. King Felipe IV is the hereditary monarch who is the head of state and is also the head of the armed forces. Like the president of the U.S., the king in this case is going to be the main head of the states and the main head of the armed forces. Now, we also talked about España having a prime minister. In this case, his name is Mariano Rajoy and he has been in office since 2011. The prime minister acts as a representative from the, for the king when he's not available. Obviously, remember that he does not make the final decisions. This is King Felipe IV and his wife, Queen Leticia. And this is the prime minister, Mariano Rajoy. Like it said oh, um, on the past slide, he has been in office since 2011. And who picks the prime minister? The the king. He's in charge of picking the prime minister. Obviously, before they held elections, and then if the king uh, approves whoever won, that person stays. Here we have the former rulers of Spain, King Juan Carlos I and Queen Sofia. They're actually King Felipe IV's parents. Queen Sofia, actually also in Madrid, has a museum named after her. It's a museum that is in charge of modern art, and we're going to be discussing it into the future. Ciudades principales. Now we're going to start talking about the main city of España. This picture that you see right here represents what a part of Madrid looks like. If you see, the buildings are really old, the avenues are huge. Uh, in España, they have metros, buses, but mainly the people like to walk. Now, Ciudades Principales, if you remember, Madrid is actually in the center of España. Madrid is the capital city, like it says right here, and it is the largest municip municipality in the community of Madrid and Spain. This city has a population of almost 3.2 million people. It is the third largest city in the European Union after London and Berlin. So remember that the capital city is Madrid. It's going to be the main city of España and it's the city that has the most populated uh, site. Now, we are going to be moving on into six places that you need to know while in Madrid. And then we're going to be moving on into talking about the rest of the main cities. There are six main landmarks to know in Madrid. The first one is Palacio Real de Madrid. It is the official residence of the Spanish royal family at the city of Madrid. But it's only used for state ceremonies. Remember that picture that I showed you earlier in the section of Gobierno? Well, that is the same palace. Palacio Real de Madrid can be translated into Royal Palace of Madrid. This is what it looks like. Like it says right there, the royal family does not live there anymore. They just only use it for special ceremonies. 
Again, every Tuesday you can actually see the National Guard practicing in the center of the palace. People can see it, you can take pictures of the National Guard, you can see how they practice. This is what it looks like from the back. On the back is just woods and on the front they're facing actually the city. The second landmark that you need to know while visiting Madrid is Teatro Real or Royal Theatre. This is a major opera house located in which city? The same one that we're talking about, Madrid, España. Today, the Teatro Real Opera is one of the greatest theaters of Europe. This teatro was actually remained, uh, it remained closed while well, during the dictatorship, and it didn't reopen until the monarchy came into place again. This is what it looks like. It is an old building. It was built in the 1900s. This is what it looks like from the inside, like it says on the slide before is one of the major opera houses and every time the king and the queen go to visit they actually have a special balcony just for them and not only in the theater actually in the bullfight rings they have a spe special balcony for them the next one is going to be el parque del buen retiro buen retiro park this is one of the largest parks in the city of madrid the park once belonged to the Spanish monarchy until the late 19th century when it became a public park. In this park you'll see that it has a lake in front of it so people usually like to use your boats to do some kind of kayaking then people also look like to have picnics in them and it's a really popular park in Spain. Like it says right there it's now only open to the public. It doesn't belong to the monarchy anymore. This is what it looks like. This is what I was telling you about. You can see people hanging out in the in the boats, people actually relaxing. Now in the back of that statue you can see the gardens. This is what it looks like. This is a picture of another perspective. The Buen Retiro Park. The next landmark in Madrid that you have to know is Biblioteca Nacional de España, National Library of Spain. It is a major public library and the largest in Spain and one of the largest libraries in the world. This is what it looks like, National Library of Spain. Moving on, we're going to be talking about two museums, Museo del Prado or Prado Museum. It is the main Spanish National Art Museum located in Southern Madrid. It features one of the world's finest collections of European art. Now this museo usually dedicates themselves to fine art, okay? They don't do any modern art. One of the main uh, paintings in Museo del Prado is called Las Meninas and I'm going to show you a picture in a moment. Now this is what it looks like. Actually the um, museums in Spain, they have some free days in which you can enter at no charge. Then you also have the possibility of uh, touring the museum in your own language. That means if you don't speak Spanish, they'll provide you with a telephone in which you can put the number of the painting that you're seeing and listen to the description in your own language. This is what it looks like. Like I said, it's basically dedicated to fine art. The main picture right here and the main painting of the museum is Las Meninas. Las Meninas means little girls. It's called by the, it's a uh, paint by Diego Velázquez. Now something really curious about this painting is that you can see actually the painter including himself in the picture. This is Diego Velázquez he painted himself painting the picture. Now the main focal point of the picture is the Duchess with her helpers which are there, her nannies. Something really also curious about it is that you can see the parents of the girl watching the girl being painted. This is a mirror and you can see the reflection in the back. 
like I said, this is the main painting on the Museo del Prado, and it's by Diego Velázquez. I mentioned Diego Velázquez when we were talking about lesson number one. Diego Velázquez is one of the most famous Spanish painters on the 1600s. Now we're going to be talking about the next museum, which is going to be Museo Nacional de Arte Reina Sofía. This museum is in, located in Madrid and it is a national museum of the 20th century art. The museum was officially inaugurated on September 10, 1992, and is named after the Queen Sophia. Remember the Queen Sophia? She is the mother of King Felipe IV. Well, this museum was dedicated to her. Like it says right here, they dedicate themselves to modern art. You can see the design is more modern, it's different. It's not like the Museo del Prado. Here we have one of the most iconic paintings in the museum, which is Guernica by Pablo Picasso. Now, Pablo Picasso was a Spanish painter born in the 1920s. Uh, he is from Malaga, and we're going to be discussing a little bit more about his life in the next couple of slides. Now, something really curious about this painting is that it represents the suffering of the people during the dictatorship. This is actually a scene from a war. You could see a people here screaming, and these parts that you see right here are actually, are actually body parts. It represents the suffering that the people went through. Even Pablo Picasso had to be in exile from España. He didn't want to be in España during the dictatorship either. Now we're going to be moving to the main cities of España. The first one that we're going to be discussing now, this is your city, numero dos, is going to be Barcelona. Now Barcelona is one of the world's leading tourist, economic, trade, fair, and cultural centers. Barcelona is known for its influence in commerce, education, entertainment, fashion, science, and the arts. All of this contributes to the start of, of Barcelona as one of the major global cities. La Sagrada Familia Church, the Sacred Family Church, is here. Now, this church is really popular around the world because it's known for not being completed. It has been under construction for more than 150 years. Even his architect, the main architect of the church, passed away in 1926. Obviously, the architects that are in charge of the project still continue the vision of the architect. And this church, it's usually being founded with people donations. That's why they have been able to get it done little by little. And it's not going to be done until 2026. Barcelona is also known for being a city near the coast, and there's soccer. If you know any Spanish country, they're really into soccer. Well, Barcelona is one of the main uh, cities that are into the soccer craziness. They have their most popular football, soccer teams, which is FC Barcelona. That is their main team. Now we're going to be moving into Antonio Gaudí, which is the architect of the La Sagrada Familia Church, that church that I told you about, that is not done, that they're going to finish it in 2012. Well, he's the architect, as you saw. He was born in 1852 and passed away in 1926. This is the La Sagrada Familia Church. It has two sections. This is the front section. If you look closely, it Closely, it might look like the Sagrada Familia Church is melting, but it's not. You're going to see here that these structures, if you look closely into the pictures later on, right, they're actually statues. Here's Barcelona once again. And now we're going to be talking about your third city, which is going to be Valencia. 
Now, Valencia is known internationally for Las Fallas, Las Fallas or the Fire Festival. This festival is located uh, in the south, right? Valencia is in the south, and it's held in March. Now, this festival represents the new beginnings, and it's about making these paper mache plastic sculptures, which eventually are going to be burned in the center of the city, representing new beginnings and the new season of harvesting. Now, Valencia is also known for the paella valenciana. Paella is the main dish of España, and you can actually eat it all over España, but it all actually started in Valencia. Valencia was the city where the paella was created. Here you have uh, a representation of the sculptures that I told you about. These are the fallas. They're going to be burned eventually. Now we're going to be moving to your city, numero cuatro. That's going to be Sevilla. Sevilla, it's a famous city known worldwide for its cultural monuments, tradition, and artistic heritage. This is the birthplace of, like I told you at the beginning, flamenco. Flamenco is a main Spanish dance and where the most amazing Easter processions takes place. Spain is mainly a Catholic uh, country. So each April, the, each city has their own rituals about the procession. It's about touring the city, doing penitence for your sins. And actually, in Sevilla, the biggest ones, the biggest processions takes place. Usually people cover themselves because they're ashamed of their sins, and they might cover themselves using a cloth, right, covering their faces and their whole bodies. This is what it looks like. This is Sevilla. This is a park in Sevilla. And again, like Barcelona, Sevilla has their own football club. In this case, it's the Sevilla's club. And you can see here other pictures of Sevilla, right? Let's move on. Now here you have a picture of what the flamenco looks like. Remember what I told you, Sevilla is known for being the birthplace of flamenco. Flamenco is a Spanish dance, obviously. You can see it all over Spain by right, being practiced by the people, but it mainly originated in Sevilla. And the flamenco usually is the girl, the one who dances, and then the male accompanies the girl with the guitar. Now, our fifth main city is going to be Málaga. Now, Málaga is one of the most important business sectors uh, in Spain. It's basically dedicated to tourism, construction, and technology services. Artist and sculptor Pablo Picasso was actually born here. Remember Pablo Picasso, the one who painted the picture on Museo de Reina Sofía, on Reina Sofía's museum? Well, he was actually born in this city, and we're going to be discussing a little bit about his life in the videos that I'm going to show you. You have to listen to them and make the notes so you can know who was he. This is Malaga, again. Malaga once again. This is Pablo Picasso, one of his paintings. There's a YouTube video there for you. It's on the playlist, so you can listen to it. And our last city is going to be Bilbao. Now, Bilbao is the center of the economical, social, and development of España. It is the main factor of the modernization of the Bay of Biscay. This is Bilbao. Again, it's a city near the coast. If you remember the picture that I showed you from the map, you could see that Bilbao was actually really close to the sea. It was really, really close to the sea. Now we're going to be talking about the language, the idioma. 
Now, España, it's obviously the word city of Spanish. Here we have Miguel de Cervantes. If you remember him, he was one of the main artists in the literature of the Spanish language. We discussed about him in your first lesson, right? They talk about him. He was the author of Don Quixote. If you don't remember what Don Quixote was, is that uh, novella about a knight, right? That has his own companions. They go into adventures. You saw the picture about the novella. You saw the picture of the novella and you see the knight and you see the companion. If you don't remember which one it is, go back to lección número uno. Now, idioma, Spanish, officially is recognized as the main language in España. Also, they know it as Castilian, okay? That's how they know Spanish in Spain. It's in España for. If you remember, Castilian is the same thing as España, but the only reason they call it that is to differentiate between the country and the language. Now, the Constitution also established that all other Spanish languages will also be official in their respecting autonomous communities. That means that all those 17 states can have their own language too, and they do. Like, for example, in Barcelona, which is Catalonia, they speak uh, Catalan, which is a mixture of French and Spanish. Like it says right there, other languages are Catalan, Basque, and Galician. All those autonomous communities are basically what you can call bilingual. They might use Sp Spanish, but they also have their own language. Now about the comida, if you remember, this is a paella, it's another type of paella. There are many ways to do it. Now paella, it's Spain's national dish, and we're going to be discussing the food right now. Now as far as the comida, the Spanish cuisine, right, consists of a great variety of dishes which stem from the differences in geography, culture, and the climate. It is heavily influenced by the seafood available from the waters that surround the country, and it reflects the country's deep Mediterranean roots. Spanish main uh, dishes are going to be the following. If you remember the paella, well, that's the Spain's national dish, but it originated in Valencia. The recipe consists of white rice, green beans, meat, chicken and rabbit, white beans, snails, seasoning such as saffron or azafran, which actually make the rice turn yellow, and rosemary. Another important food is going to be el gazpacho, which is a cold soup, a tomato cold soup, made of tomato, garlic, bread, and olive oil, and that is the picture on the bottom. Now. Lastly, we're going to be discussing about the religion, religion. If you see here, this is a closer picture of the Sacred Family Church, La Sagrada Familia Church. Roman Catholicism has long been the main religion of Spain, although it no longer has official status by law. Catholicism is the religion most commonly taught in Spain, although the teaching of Islam, Judaism, and Evangelical and Christianity is also recognized by law. Why Islam? Because if you saw Morocco, Marruecos, Egypt, Argelia, they're really close to España. The only thing divided those countries from España is a, a piece of sea. That's why in España it's really easy to find Arabic people living and they practice Islam. Now, as far as Judaism, Spain is actually a big center for people from Israel, and they practice Judaism. According to a June 2016 study, 60% of Spaniards self-identified as Catholics. Here I'm showing you an example of a procession in Easter. Remember, I told you that in Easter, they make these big uh, tours around the city, right? 
trying to come clean for their sins and the people actually participates along with the church. Here you have some men dressed with white and red robes. While in the video that I'm going to show you, it's actually going to be in purple. And this concludes your lesson numero cuatro. Remember that España, which is the map right here, the main capital is going to be Madrid. You have it there. You have the Pyrenees at the very top. Remember that those are the main mountain ranges dividing España from Francia. We have Barcelona, the Sacred Family Church, Valencia, which is the birthplace of the paella, also the Mediterranean Sea. We have Flamenco, signaling here that Sevilla is closed. Remember that Sevilla is the birthplace of Flamenco. And we also have Portugal. So make sure that you look over the videos and write your notes in order to complete the actividades. Hasta la vista.